Praise the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. If you know Jesus right now, you have a testimony. Praise God, for he has saved you from the power of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what is on my heart this afternoon. There are many that in the churches in these last days that believe that we do not need to fear God. They have this teaching in the churches that God is not to be feared, that because all of his wrath was poured out upon his son on the cross on Calvary, that there is no wrath left, and that God is just our buddy, our friend, our sky daddy, and we just need to uh, befriend him. We just, as sinners in the world, those people that are not saved, we just need to recognize that God loves us and just befriend him. And what they're doing is creating a God of their own imagination. And then they're creating an imaginary relationship with that imaginary God, which appeases their conscience, but does not commend them to the salvation of God in any wise. Um, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, saith the scripture. And it, although it is true that the love of God brings salvation to men, it is not true that the love of God brings men unto salvation. And I'm going to explain that to you, and I'm going to say that, that again. Um, I run into many people who believe that they are Christians, and they're not Christians according to the Scripture, because they have not obeyed the Gospel according to the Scripture. And when I try to witness to them, they say, Well, I came to God because I love Him. I didn't come to God because I fear Him. I came to God because I love Him. And to people that tell me that, I can only reply, you have never known him. Because it's not possible to love God without fearing him. That's not possible. When you read in the scriptures about the wrath of the living God that is to come, I mean, just, just let me give you an example. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go to the, the last chapter of the, the book of the prophecy of Isaiah. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by his sword will, for, excuse me, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Praise the Lord. Let's look at um, the 110th Psalm. Psalm 110. Praise the Lord. Psalm 110. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. You know what it means to strike through? It means to put a sword or a spear through somebody's body. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Praise the Lord. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Hallelujah. And that goes back to the book of Judges, if anybody doesn't understand that. Uh, what else am I thinking? Praise the Lord. Uh, Revelation chapter 14. Hallelujah. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Sixteen hundred furlongs is two hundred miles. The Bible talks about the battle of Armageddon when Jesus Christ is going to come back and the armies of the earth are going to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the Bible says that there shall be blood as high as a horse's bridle for 200 miles wide. The Lord of Lords and King of Kings is a man of war and he is coming back to do battle against the people of this earth and to take judgment against the people of this world. And he is going to judge first in his own house. The Lord... His judgment starts in his own house. Peter said that. And so how much should we fear the living God? Oh, hallelujah. There is a phrase that children have today in this world. They say, no fear. It's a catchphrase. It's a slogan. It's the stupidest thing that I have ever heard. No fear is ignorance. Fear is a good thing. Fear is what keeps you from stepping out of a moving vehicle. Fear is what keeps you from, from offering a piece of pizza to a bear in the woods. Fear is what keeps you from doing things that hurt you and endanger you. Fear is a good thing. Fear is what keeps you from doing stupid things. And the fear of God is what keeps you from evil. The Bible says the fear of the Lord maketh men depart from evil. The Bible says in the middle of the whole Bible, this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. 
So those, those people in the churches that say we don't need to fear God, they're deceived. They don't know the scripture. They've never read the Bible. All they know is the lies of their pretenders that stand in, 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 in the pulpits and, and entertain them for money. They're paid entertainers, as I call them. That's exactly what they are. If you don't fear God, you don't know God. If you say that you love him and you don't fear him, you've never met him. Okay? If you know him, you fear him and you love him. And although it is the love of God that brings salvation to men, because the scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And again, it's written in, in this, uh, the love of God is made known to us that he gave his Son for us, that he would die for us and give us life. But it is not the love of God that brings men to salvation. It is the love of God that brings salvation to men, yes. But it is the fear of God that brings men to salvation. Those in the churches who say, oh, I didn't come to God because I fear him, I came to him because I love him, they don't know him. They don't know him, and they're not saved, and they haven't obeyed the gospel. They haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. They haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. All they're doing is just going to a feel-good organization that they call a church. It's a social organization where they all get together and pat each other on the back and tell each other how much God loves them. They don't know the Lord. They don't know the Lord. Salvation comes to those who have a broken and a contrite heart, saith the Scripture. Okay, Salvation comes to those who are meek. And lowly salvation comes to those who will repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost salvation comes to those who hear the law and the law brings conviction unto their hearts and they weep and cry out as in the days of Jeremiah there's a verse in the scripture that so many people quote that they, they say um, the, the, the joy of the Lord is your strength and it's written in, in the ninth chapter of Nehemiah, I think, either the eighth chapter or the ninth chapter. And the reason that it was said by the priests to the people is because the people had heard the law and they began to cry and to weep because they knew that God was holy and they had broken his law. And then it was the priests who said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Weep not. Make, make gifts and share with your neighbors and, and make food and share with your neighbors because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Because they were rejoicing because they had come to brokenness and repentance. And it is at that point when you come to brokenness and repentance before God because His holiness exposes your wickedness that you begin to know the living God. And so it is the love of God that brings salvation to men, but it is the fear of God that brings men to salvation. I'm going to say that one more time. It is the love of God that brings salvation to men, but it is the fear of God that brings men to salvation. If you have not feared God, you have not known him. And if you have not known him, I would advise you to seek him because you're going to meet him. And when you meet him, you will fear him. And if you meet him and you fear him and you have not known him, you'll be in terrible trouble. But if when you meet him, you have known him and feared him and loved him and served him, then you will rejoice. Then you will rejoice. The wicked flee when no man pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And those of us who know the Lord and fear him and have obeyed his gospel we're not better than anybody else i'm not better than you whoever you are watching this video i don't care who you are in the whole world i'm not better than you i'm a man just like you maybe you're a woman but you're a human and so am i just like you i'm not better than anybody but by the grace of god he shined in my heart the light of the face of jesus christ and showed me the truth of the gospel and if he'll do it with me he'll do it with you because i'm nobody Seek him. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given you. Thus saith the Lord. And I give you these words this day in the name of Jesus Christ, because I love you. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. May the Lord bless you as you seek him. And I'm here for you if I can help you.